I'm in the woods today to harvest a stave of English elm, from which I hope to make a longbow. But whilst I'm here, I thought I'd take the opportunity to answer a viewer's question. And that is, how do I identify the trees that I use to make longbows? So before I harvest my elm stave, I thought we could go for a little walk around the woods. You see, so far I've used four species of wood from which to make longbows. Ash, hazel, yew and blackthorn. So I'll show you how I identify those four species. But on the way round, I'm quite sure that we'll pass by several other species of wood that will make brilliant bows. So this is the first species of tree that I use for bow making. It's ash. This is a mature ash, maybe a hundred years old, possibly even more. And the bark is very distinctive on these older trees. It's fissured and grey and quite craggy. And these are the leaves of the ash. When I made my first ash bow, I used something like this, which is an ash sapling. As you can see, the bark on a sapling is much different to that on the mature ash. I found the wood to be spongy and soft and not able to sustain a high draw weight, but it's a great wood on which to practice if you're a beginner. And next, the hazel tree. Really, really nice wood to work with. But sometimes the hazel can be a little bit of a challenge to identify. It's a tree that's often coppiced, that is, cut off at the base, causing it to throw long, straight shoots. And this means that the tree can grow into all sorts of different shapes. And even the bark can sometimes be a little bit of a puzzle. Let's have a closer look. Here you can see two different types of bark formation. This is a fairly young shoot, this is an older one. But the bark on a mature hazel tree looks like this. This is the hazel leaf. And sometimes the very best hazel staves are right up the tree. And don't forget that the hazel tree can give you fantastic arrow shafts as well. Here is a tree that rarely grows big enough to throw a decent bow stave, but when it does, it's absolutely magical wood to work with. It's called Blackthorn. The bark of the Blackthorn is quite distinct. Its surface is covered in little nodules that look like tiny, tiny, tightly pursed lips. These are the leaves of the Blackthorn. Of course, blackthorn takes its name from these murderous spines. These are the unripe fruit of the blackthorn called sloes. And now that most sought after of bow woods, a tree that really did help win wars. This is a yew tree. The yew tree is really easy to identify. First, look for the bark and these contorted trunks. The bark is a kind of reddish plum colour and sometimes comes off in flakes like this. Yew is an evergreen softwood 
in its leaves are another key to easy identification. And it's from this that use fame as a bowwood derives. The heartwood and the sapwood. It's like a natural laminate, one withstanding compression and the other tension. I have to say, there is something magnificently mysterious about the yew tree. Well, I better get back and take my elm stave before we have yet another shower. But on the way, I'm going to call in at a few trees from which in the future I may take a stave or two just to see whether or not from them I can make some decent longbows. And here's the first. Perhaps in this setting it's not that easy to see the shape of this tree, but it's one that we can all very, very easily identify. It's holly. And this is the bark of the holly, and we all know what the leaves look like. And here's the next one, elder. Elder is very easy to identify. The bark is distinctly craggy. Here are the leaves. And in the late spring and early summer, these are the flowers that you'll see colouring and indeed scenting the hedgerows of the UK and Western Europe. This is a piece of deadfall elder but it's a good opportunity to show you an unusual feature about this tree that I'm quite excited to try when I make a bow. And that is, it's hollow in the middle. There is a central core of soft pith, which you'll have to remove when making a bow. This, though not a very good example to show you, is a crab apple. And this is the crab apple's bark and these are its leaves. So, that's three bowwoods I may use in the future. But now, it's my elm. So that's my elm stave. I got two from one tree. One for me and one for a good friend. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.